in class yesterday, we set ourselves the objective to, to leave class and go away and think about the framework, but think about it in the context of a specific economic event. And that economic event was the Volkswagen um, diesel scandal, if you want to call it that, that erupted in the world in about September of 2015. And um, we considered what happened in that event. We gave ourselves an understanding of the economic event, what happened, what caused it. And then we said, right, let's go away and pretend that there's no IFRS other than the framework. And we are now the financial director of Volkswagen. We're sitting in our office somewhere in Germany. And we have to prepare a financial report for Volkswagen at the end of December 2015. And what would we, how would we want to report on this economic event to, to the broader world as it's going to be communicated in our financial reports? So each of you has an idea in your head or in the teams that you worked in has thought about this and what you're going to do. So I think the most important thing here, and that's unfortunate that we can't discuss in class everybody's ideas, but the thing that's most important to me in this learning process is the way you thought about it and the way you went through the process. So you've got now the previous video where we spoke about it in terms of a journal. So your starting point would generally be work out the economic event. So in class, some of the students had suggested that we need to break this economic event down into different elements. We need to consider the court cases from the class action suits of asthma sufferers perhaps, we need to consider the actual recalls of the vehicle, consider separately the fines, and break it down into smaller elements. And that's going to require some judgment as to which element is right. But it's probably not a bad idea just to make it more manageable for yourself. But in each instance, the process you're going to go through from there is what's really important to me. The, the, whether the answer is right or wrong is less important than the process that you're going through and the, the thought process you've used. So... Whatever you've decided as your micro event or if you've looked at this as a whole event, I think your starting point needs to be, do I have elements here? Is this fine creating a liability? Do I have an expense? Do I have a liability? So if you think of your liability definition, a lot of the students that I did discuss this with, they were quite concerned that there's no present obligation. Then we step back for a moment and I used the instance and I said, if I had brought chocolates to class for the last 10 years and you guys now were the 11th year that had arrived in FRK 201, would you not expect chocolates on the first day because I had given all the other years? So even though there's no law about it and there's no legal obligation, through my behavior, I've created an obligation. So... A lot of the people in class at first did not think there's a present obligation, but when they heard this example, they did start to think, well, Volkswagen has never said they're not guilty. They've never challenged the fact that they cheated on their emissions tests. So there could probably be a liability here. In all likelihood, there is a present obligation. So you would probably go through your liability definition and be able to, to say that there is an obligation as a result of a past event, they had the software, they were cheating on the test, it's going to result in a future outflow of economic benefits. There will be fines, there will be class action suits. So you've got your element definition. Now the question is, can you recognize anything with that? So the recognition part of it is a bit tougher perhaps. Outflow of benefits probable, I think we meet that. There is cases against them, um, Volkswagen's already admitted they may need to recall and things like that. So. Probability of outflow, check the box. Measurement's the problem. What do we measure this thing at? Can we measure it? If you've broken it down now into smaller components instead of the bigger scandal, perhaps there may be some components you could say, yes, I can get a good estimate of that. I know what it will cost us to fix the software, speaking as a Volkswagen FD. I could work that out. But the court cases, there has been this, this article we looked at with an estimate made of $40, $49 billion dollars. How reliable is that estimate? Can we do that? So in terms of accounting for this and recognizing this, that might be the problem areas getting measurement associated with this. If we can't measure it, we can't record it in the SFP in the Statement of Comprehensive Income, but it comes back to what's our objective in accounting. We want useful information. People are going to want to know about this. What people are we reporting to though? We are reporting to investors, lenders, and creditors. So we need to focus on their information needs. 
we're not giving them anything now in the SFP because the recognition criteria hasn't been met. So perhaps something in the notes. We might need to do a narrative. And what would we give them? What would be of interest to them? What would be useful to them? What would be relevant? Can you faithfully represent whatever you're saying? Um, so those will be the considerations. So you see the process I've gone through now is very much like in the last video. So I don't think there's really a right and, a right, right and wrong answer to this. As long as you can motivate whatever you've done, if you feel these things are measurable and, and you have evidence to back that up, then the, that is an acceptable answer. So I'd rather use, I wouldn't use the words right and wrong in this instance. Please remember, though, in the assessments that you will be doing through your degree and, and in your professional examination, the scenarios are created very much in a more black and white world than this grey environment that you'll be ac actually practicing in one day. So in your assessments, you'll usually come across a scenario that's more black and white. You'll be able to say, yes, it is this or no, it isn't.